What's up, Team 116? Let's continue our journey through the Bible, where through the faith of Daniel and the three amigos, we have seen this nation that captured the Israelites now start recognizing God as the true God. Today, the punishment is over, Israel's getting out of timeout and returning home. But is it all smooth sailing back? Well, to find out, check out this short clip, then follow the instructions on the screen, and I will see you shortly. Before the Israelites left Babylon, the king of Persia, who had overthrown Babylon, decided to help them rebuild the temple back in Jerusalem. He organized people from all over the land to give livestock and supplies to the Israelites. He even returned all of the gold and silver that the Babylonians had stolen from the temple. 50,000 Israelites returned to Jerusalem and rebuilt the altar of the temple then laid the foundation for the building itself. Before the temple was even finished, the Israelites began to offer sacrifices and worship God in it once again. But other countries surrounding Jerusalem began to worry about the Israelites regaining power. So they sabotaged the rebuilding project, and it came to a standstill for 16 years. But God used two men, Haggai and Zechariah, to encourage the Israelites to resume building the temple and not to be afraid of their enemies. So they continued building, strengthened by the prophet's words. The opposition continued, this time from a man named Tatanai, the governor of a nearby region. He wanted to stop the Israelites from building and worked to convince the Persian king, Darius, to stop the Israelites. Not only did King Darius not stop the rebuilding project, he threatened Tatanai and anyone else who would try to stop the temple from being rebuilt, that he would kill them. Then he made Tatanai give funding, animals, and supplies to the Israelites. So the work continued, and almost 70 years after it had been destroyed, the Israelites finished rebuilding the temple. They dedicated it by sacrificing hundreds of animals to God and returning the priests back to their positions of leadership in the temple. God was once again worshipped in Jerusalem. Well, my see the story this week is this foundation to the construction of a building which may be one of the most obvious ones that I've chosen so far, but a foundation is just so critical, I just had to go there. Foundation is so, so, so important because it's exactly that. It's the foundation. Of so here we go, guys. Right off the bat, this week, it's happening. The Israelites are being allowed to go return home. The kingdom of Persia conquered Babylon, and their new king, Cyrus, decrees that any Israelite who wants to is allowed to return home but they are even given a greater blessing than just being allowed to go home. And in any locality where survivors may now be living, the people are to provide them with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with freewill offerings for the temple of God in Jerusalem. The king not only decreed their freedom to go home, but also essentially decreed that his people would provide the Israelites reparations through supplies that they would need to rebuild the temple and restart their life. And even on top of that, the king returned to them all the articles from the old temple that Nebuchadnezzar stole so that they could be used for the new temple. So, now just imagine for a second with me that someone kidnaps you and they take all your stuff for themselves. Then someone stronger beats them, inheriting you and all your stuff, free to do whatever they want to with you and your stuff. And their decision is to give you all your stuff back and let you go home. That's essentially, in a worldly view, what's happening here. Let's go home. So many of the Israelites set out to return to the Promised Land, and the priests, the Levites, the musicians, the gatekeepers, and the temple servants settled in their own towns, along with some of the other people and the rest of the Israelites settled in their, their towns. So here they are, 70 years of exile later. They're back home. And although it's not the same home that they left, I love what it says that they did next. 
When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, the people assembled together as one in Jerusalem. The people didn't come together in groups. They didn't opt out from the rest of their people. They all assembled together as one, as one family, one unit, one body of believers. The priests then went to work rebuilding the altar to God so that the first thing they could do is provide their sacrificial offerings to God. Despite their fear of the peoples around them, they built the altar on its foundation and sacrificed burnt offerings on it to the Lord. Now, did you catch the start of that verse? They rebuilt God's altar despite their fear of the peoples around them. Now, why would they fear the nations around them? Well, remember the state of the home they're coming back to. Their hometowns were not in amazing shape. They haven't been kept up for 70 years. The temple and altar to God were already destroyed. And the wall around Jerusalem, which is where they are, had been torn down, leaving it wide open to intruders. How often do you see, even just today, where people take advantage of other people who are in weak positions, who are easy to take control of? I don't like you. I look at your face, and I want to hit it. Is that so wrong? Well, that was Israel at this point. They were in a weak position, being returning exiles to a city that's not been kept up for 70 years, and they did not have a defensive wall to keep them protected from attack. Now, it would have been easy in their fear to either hunker down in their homes or focus on building up a defense to a possible attack. But instead, their focus was on rebuilding what would give glory to God and allow them to provide their offerings to God to praise Him. How often today do we hit a moment of fear and we hunker down or we get defensive instead of putting our focus on praising God in the midst of it? Well, it gets even more meaningful to them as after they build the altar and have their praise celebrations to God, they return to rebuilding the temple, the house of God. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments and with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals, took their places to praise the Lord, as prescribed by David king of Israel. With praise and thanksgiving they sang to the Lord, He is good, His love toward Israel endures forever. And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid, and the sound was heard far away. Now think about this verse in the context of the history of the Israelites, how they tend to be super greedy, really self-absorbed, easily swayed away from God to worldly treasures, even at their most blessed. And now, here they are, having this incredibly emotional time of praise and thanksgiving, doing it so loudly that it was heard far away from them. I'm singing, I'm in a store, and I'm singing, I'm in a store, and I'm singing. Hey! And what were they celebrating? The temple's foundation. The temple itself was barely started being rebuilt. All they had was the foundation. How cool is it, though, that even though it's just the foundation, they recognize the significance of that moment, the significance of that blessing. They didn't need extravagance. They didn't need riches. At that moment, they weren't even thinking anymore about the absence of the defensive wall. Having lost everything, they realized that they only needed the foundation of God. The foundation is so, so, so important because it's exactly that. It's the foundation. Of As tends to happen whenever something is new and exciting and joyous, the honeymoon period of joy, peace, and harmony, it ends as the enemy nations around Israel, recognizing how they are trying to restore their nation, well, they start interfering. Then the peoples around them set out to discourage the people of Judah and make them afraid to go on building. They bribed officials to work against them and frustrate their plans during the entire reign of, king, of Cyrus, king of Persia, and down to the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Now, while only two kings are mentioned here, there were actually a series of kings that reigned from Cyrus to Darius, meaning the Israelites were facing years upon years of heavy discouragement from their enemies. In fact, at one point, the enemies wrote a letter to the current king that told him to look at how Israel's past kings had stayed independent, how they did not cooperate with the other kings, how they rebelled against other kingdoms, trying to convince this king to order them to stop rebuilding their nation so that he doesn't lose control over them or any benefits that they provide to his kingdom. And it worked. 
Now issue an order to these men to stop work, so that this city will not be rebuilt until I so order. Be careful not to neglect this matter. Why let this threat grow to the detriment of the royal interests? And so the Israelites were made to stop rebuilding the temple. And scripture actually mentions they were stopped by force, which sent them into a period of just hunkering in their homes. When a new king, Darius, took over, God sent a couple prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, to the Israelites with messages to remind them of their task and obligation to rebuild the temple, and to offer encouragement as they built it, offering messages such as these. Therefore tell the people, this is what the Lord Almighty says, Return to me, declares the Lord Almighty, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. Then they repented and said, The Lord Almighty has done to us what our ways and practices deserve, just as he determined to do. This is what the Lord Almighty says, Just as I had determined to bring disaster on you and showed no pity when your ancestors angered me, says the Lord Almighty, so now I have determined to do good again to Jerusalem and Judah. Do not be afraid. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. and The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place, and he's talking about the temple, in this place I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. So the Israelites restarted their work rebuilding the temple, energized and encouraged by these messages from God. But they did it without approval from the king which led to the people in charge of watching over them to ask what was going on. Well, these people sent a letter to King Darius filling him in on the situation and asking for his order of what was to happen. Were they to be allowed to continue building or were they to stop? Now, if you remember the brief mention of Darius from Daniel's story last week, he was understanding how important God is, decreeing that everyone was to worship God because of how he saved Daniel. Well, Darius researches the history of the Israelites' freedom to rebuild the temple and issues a similarly blessing-filled decree allowing them to continue with some added benefits and protection. Do not interfere with the work on this temple of God. Let the governor of the Jews and the Jewish elders rebuild this house of God on its site. Moreover, I hereby decree what you are to do for these elders of the Jews in the construction of this house of God. Their expenses are to be fully paid out of the royal treasury so that the work will not stop. Whatever is needed, young bulls, rams, male lambs for burnt offerings to the God of heaven, and wheat, salt, wine, and olive oil, as requested by the priests in Jerusalem, must be given them daily without fail, so that they may offer sacrifices pleasing to the God of heaven and pray for the well-being of the king and his sons. Furthermore, I decree that if anyone defies this edict, a beam is to be pulled from their house, and they are to be impaled on it. And for this crime, their house is to be made a pile of rubble. May God, who has caused his name to dwell there, Overthrow any king or people who lifts a hand to change this decree or to destroy this temple in Jerusalem. I mean, how's that for support? So the elders of the Jews continued to build and prosper under the preaching of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah, a descendant of Iddo. They finished building the temple according to the command of the God of Israel and the decrees of the kings of Persia. Then the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the exiles celebrated the dedication of the house of God with joy. So the Israelites have now been restored, both physically and, most importantly, spiritually, returning their focus to God. There is still work to be done, however, as they've only rebuilt the altar and the temple. Their towns still need kept up, and Jerusalem is still without its protective wall, which we'll lead us into next week. And a quick little aside also is that the next chapter is on Esther's story, which we actually covered a few months ago in another video. And so given that we've already covered her, and that her story happens during the same time where the Israelites are returning from exile, feel free to follow this link on the screen to watch our other Esther video if you wish to find out what happened with her. But now is your time to join the story for this week. So think about sharing how have you seen or experienced the rescuing nature and power of God, either in your life or in someone else's? Why was it important for the Israelites to focus on rebuilding the altar and temple of God first? And what parallel can we draw to rebuilding our lives? And is God encouraging you to either start or to continue working towards a good work that will bring Him glory? And are you letting fear interfere in accomplishing that work? So this week, let's be people who praise God for the foundation He's given each of us for our lives, especially spiritually. And I'll catch you on the next part of our journey.